In the heart of the galaxy, where the fabric of space weaves together the destinies of countless civilizations, the Galactic Council Chamber stood as a testament to unity and diplomacy among the stars. This grand edifice, with its ceilings echoing the celestial canopy and walls imbued with the history of a thousand worlds, was today seized by an air of tension that belied its serene purpose. Here representatives of myriad races, each a guardian of their people's will, convened in a gathering that would decide the fate of a species not their own. Among the assembly, a figure stood markedly human, his stance rigid, his gaze unwavering. Commander Alex Wren, a veteran of Earth's fledgling yet formidable spacefaring armada, was no stranger to the complexities of interstellar politics. Yet the proposition laid before the Council this day was one that threatened to fracture the very foundations of the alliance humanity had fought so hard to be a part of. The motion on the floor, presented by a diplomat of the Calyx, a race ancient and wise whose words carried the weight of centuries, was a decree born of fear and necessity. The galaxy faced a new menace, the Zarthons, whose motives were as shadowy as their technology was advanced. In the face of such an adversary, unity was paramount. Yet it was humanity's involvement, or rather their exclusion, that was the crux of the day's debate. Humanity, with their brief but tumultuous history among the stars, had proven themselves valiant and resourceful. However, their penchant for unpredictability and internal strife posed a risk many on the Council were unwilling to entertain in the coming conflict. The proposal was clear. Bar humanity from participating in the war against the Zarthons, for fear their involvement might escalate the very threat they sought to quell. The chamber erupted in a cacophony of voices as the delegates deliberated. Arguments flew, some in defense of humanity's capacity for ingenuity and bravery, others citing historical precedents of human actions inadvertently leading to greater calamities. Through it all, Alex Wren stood silent, his heart a storm of indignation and resolve. He thought of Earth, of the sacrifices made by its people to stand among the stars as equals. He thought of the blood spilled, not just in defense of their own world but in aid of others, of the hands extended in friendship across the void, and of the uncountable acts of heroism that had gone unnoticed or unappreciated. To be sidelined in a moment of galactic peril was a slap to the face of every man, woman, and child who had dreamed of a united cosmos. As the debate wore on, the inevitability of the Council's decision began to crystallize. The vote, when it came, was a mere formality. The decree passed, barring humanity from the fight against the Zarthons. A decision meant to preserve unity had sown the seeds of division, leaving a bitter taste in the mouths of those who had envisioned a galaxy standing together against the darkness. The chamber emptied, the delegates departing in a silence that spoke volumes of the uncertainty that lay ahead. Alone in the vastness of the council chamber, Alex Wren allowed himself a moment of vulnerability. The weight of the decision pressed down on him, a burden he felt not just as a soldier, but as a human. Yet as the stars outside the chamber continued their ageless dance, indifferent to the plights of mortals, a spark of defiance kindled within Alex's chest. Humanity would not be sidelined. They would find a way to contribute, to fight, not for glory or recognition, but because it was who they were. In the face of adversity, humanity had always found a way to rise. And so, under the indifferent gaze of a billion stars, Commander Alex Wren set his resolve. The war against the Zarthons would be fought on many fronts, and though humanity had been barred from the battlefield, they would not stand idly by. In the shadows and the silences, they would make their stand proving that even the smallest light could pierce the darkest night. The decree of the Galactic Council had been laid down, but the spirit of humanity remained unbroken, ready to face the unknown with courage undimmed. The news of the Galactic Council's decision rippled through the corridors of power on Earth with the subtlety of a supernova. Screens flickered to life, broadcasting the decree that humanity was to play no part in the upcoming conflict against the Zarthons. In the heart of every man, woman, and child who bore witness, a complex tapestry of emotions unfurled, anger, disbelief, and an underlying current of resolve that spoke to the very essence of what it meant to be human. Commander Alex Wren returned to Earth, 
a world that for all its diversity and discord, now found itself united under the banner of an indignation that transcended borders and ideologies. The Council's decree was not just a prohibition from war, it was a challenge to humanity's place among the stars, a question mark against their capacity for contribution and sacrifice. In the days that followed, the world's leaders convened in a series of emergency sessions, their debates broadcast for all to see. The people of Earth, from the sprawling urban landscapes to the remote corners where the future seemed a distant light, watched as their representatives grappled with the Council's decision. Alex, though a military man, found himself thrust into the political arena, his insights and experiences among the stars now a valuable asset in a debate that sought to redefine humanity's interstellar identity. The question that loomed over every conversation was not whether humanity would abide by the Council's decree, but how they would respond to it. The decision, when it came, was as bold as it was unprecedented. Humanity would respect the Council's decree in letter, but not in spirit. A clandestine operation was put into motion, one that would see a small, select group of humans engage in covert activities against the Zarthons. This operation would not seek approval from the Galactic Council, nor would it acknowledge the boundaries it sought to impose. It was an act of defiance, a testament to humanity's unwillingness to stand by while the galaxy burned. Commander Wren was chosen to lead this operation, a task that required not just a keen strategic mind, but a depth of humanity that could unite a team of individuals from across the spectrum of human experience. The team would be diverse, each member selected for their unique skills and the common thread of courage that bound them. Recruitment was a delicate process, conducted under the veil of secrecy. Each candidate was approached with the gravity of the situation laid bare. There were no illusions about the danger they would face nor the consequences should they fail. Yet for every warning of peril, there was a spark of determination, a shared understanding that this was more than a mission. It was a statement of humanity's resilience. The team that emerged was a reflection of humanity itself, complex, flawed, but undeniably courageous. Among them were soldiers and scientists, diplomats and spies, each with their own story their own reasons for stepping into the shadow of a war they had been forbidden to fight. As they gathered for the first time, Commander Wren looked upon the faces of his team, seeing not just the individuals before him, but the embodiment of humanity's indomitable spirit. This was their response to the Galactic Council, a message carved not in words, but in actions. They would operate in the spaces between, where light met shadow to prove that humanity's contribution to the galaxy was not defined by decrees or boundaries, but by their willingness to stand up in the face of adversity. In the shadowed reaches of space, far from the prying eyes of the Galactic Council and the heated debates of Earth's halls of power, the true nature of the enemy loomed. The Zarthons, a name that until recently had been but a whisper on the lips of the galaxy's most seasoned explorers, had emerged from the void with a force that seemed as unstoppable as the march of time itself. Their ships, vast constructs of metal and dark energy, cut through space with an elegance that belied their destructive purpose. Worlds that had for centuries thrived under the banner of peace now lay in ruins, their civilizations either subjugated or scattered to the winds. The Zarthon's technology was not just advanced. It was alien in a way that confounded the brightest minds among the allied races. Their motives, inscrutable, seemed focused only on expansion and conquest, with diplomacy or negotiation nowhere to be found in their lexicon. Commander Alex Wren and his newly assembled team, cloaked by the anonymity of their unofficial standing, delved into the daunting task of understanding this adversary. The first encounter with the Zarthons was not planned. It came as a rogue human squad acting against orders but driven by a need to act, engaged a Zarthon scouting party near the borders of a neutral zone. The engagement was brief and brutal. The human squad, despite their courage and the element of surprise, was outmatched by the Zarthon's superior weaponry and shields. Yet in their stand, a flicker of insight was gained. The Zarthons, for all their might, were not invincible. Their tactics, reliant on overwhelming force and advanced technology, showed no adaptation, no creativity. This encounter, though a tactical defeat, provided Alex's team with valuable data. 
It was a glimpse into the enemy's armor, a hint that perhaps the Zarthon's greatest strength could also be their weakness. Humanity, with its unpredictability and penchant for innovation, could offer something the Zarthons had not yet faced. A challenge not just of might, but of mind. The aftermath of the skirmish sent ripples through the ranks of the team. Some saw it as a harbinger of the difficult path ahead, a sobering reminder of the cost of their clandestine war. Others, fueled by the brief but fiery engagement, felt a renewed sense of purpose. They were under no illusions about the scale of their task. To face the Zarthons was to walk a razor's edge between audacity and folly. As the team regrouped, the reality of their mission settled in. They were not just fighting for humanity's right to stand among the stars. They were fighting for the very survival of the galaxy. The Zarthons, in their relentless advance, had left a trail of devastation that could not be ignored. Commander Wren, in the quiet moments between planning and preparation, understood the gravity of their undertaking. They were but a handful against a force that had brought entire worlds to their knees. Yet, in this challenge, he saw not just the peril, but the possibility. Humanity had always thrived in the face of adversity, their history a tapestry woven from threads of resilience and defiance. The mission ahead would require more than just military prowess. It would demand innovation, cunning, and a willingness to tread into the unknown. For Alex and his team, the battle against the Zarthans was a journey into uncharted space, both literal and metaphorical. They would need to be more than soldiers. They would need to be pioneers, charting a course through the darkness with the light of human ingenuity guiding their way. As the reality of their mission against the Zarthon settled over Commander Alex Wren and his team like a shadow, an unexpected beacon of light emerged from the depths of the galaxy. The secret pact, born from whispered conversations and clandestine meetings, would forge an alliance as unlikely as it was necessary. The meeting took place on a derelict space station orbiting a dead star, a location chosen for its neutrality and obscurity. Here, representatives of humanity and a faction of sympathetic aliens, known as the Kithars, came together. The Kithars, a race of beings whose appearance was as enigmatic as their history, had long been observers of galactic affairs, choosing to intervene only when the balance of the cosmos seemed at risk. The Kithars had watched the Zarthons advance with growing concern, recognizing in humanity's plight a reflection of their own ancient struggles. They saw in humans not the unpredictability and violence feared by the Galactic Council, but a potential for creativity, resilience, and most importantly, the capacity for change. Commander Wren, leading the human delegation, approached the meeting with a mixture of skepticism and hope. The proposition was straightforward. The Kithars would provide intelligence, technology, and sanctuary, while the humans would act as the spearhead in covert operations against the Zarthons. This alliance, hidden from the eyes of the Council, would operate in the shadows, striking at the heart of the Zarthon menace with precision and guile. The discussions were intense, the stakes clear to all involved. For the Kithars, this was a departure from centuries of non-intervention. For the humans, it was a chance to prove their worth to the galaxy, not through words, but through deeds. Trust was built slowly, with each side revealing their vulnerabilities and strengths, their hopes and fears. An agreement was reached, sealed not with signatures or formal accords, but with a mutual understanding of the task ahead. The pact was a testament to the belief that, even in the darkest of times, unity could be found and differences set aside for the greater good. Commander Wren and his team left the meeting with more than just the promise of support. They carried with them advanced Kithar technology, capable of cloaking their movements and enhancing their weaponry, and intelligence that offered new insights into the Zarthon's operations. Most importantly, they carried a renewed sense of purpose. The path ahead was fraught with danger, but they were no longer walking it alone. The alliance between humans and Kithars was a beacon of hope, a symbol of what could be achieved when diverse beings came together in the face of a common enemy. Yet, as they prepared for their first joint operation, the team was acutely aware of the challenges ahead. The Zarthans were relentless, 
their power growing with each conquered world. The stakes were nothing less than the survival of the galaxy itself. In the shadows of the derelict space station, as the meeting adjourned and the participants dispersed, a new chapter in the fight against the Zarthons began. Commander Wren and his team, equipped with new allies and new tools, were ready to take the fight to the enemy. They knew the road ahead would test them in ways they could scarcely imagine. Yet, driven by a shared resolve and buoyed by their newfound alliance, they faced the future with determination. The secret pact was more than a strategic necessity. It was a symbol of hope, a reminder that even in the vast and often divided galaxy, common ground could be found. Together, humans and Kythars would stand against the tide of darkness, fighting not just for survival, but for the future of all sentient life in the cosmos. With the newfound alliance between humanity and the Kythars solidifying into a tangible force against the Zarthon threat, Commander Alex Wren faced the critical task of assembling his team. This group would not only represent humanity's defiance against the Galactic Council's decree, but also serve as the spearhead in the covert operations planned alongside their Kithar allies. The selection process was meticulous. Each candidate scrutinized, not just for their skills and experience, but for the resilience of their spirit and their ability to innovate under pressure. The first to be recruited was Dr. Lena Kurov, a brilliant engineer and physicist whose work on quantum entanglement had the potential to revolutionize stealth technology. Her ability to think outside the conventional bounds of science made her an invaluable asset, especially now that they had Kythar technology to integrate and adapt. Next, Commander Wren turned to Mikhail Santos, a tactician with an unrivaled ability to predict enemy movements. Santos, a former adversary of Wren's from their academy days, had a mind that worked like a chess game, always several moves ahead. Their past differences aside, Wren knew that Santos' strategic prowess was indispensable. The team needed not just brains, but brawn. For this role, Wren recruited Tanya Weber, an ex-Special Forces operative known for her extraordinary physical capabilities and proficiency in close-quarters combat. Weber had retired from active duty following a mission gone awry, but jumped at the chance to return to action driven by a deep-seated desire to make a difference. To navigate the complex political landscape of their mission, Wren enlisted the expertise of Jace Lee, a former diplomat with connections across multiple star systems. Lee's ability to negotiate, understand alien cultures, and decipher political undercurrents would be key in ensuring their operations remained under the radar. Rounding out the team was an unlikely candidate, Kale, a Kithar technician who had volunteered to join the human crew. Kale brought not only a deep understanding of Kithar technology, but also a unique perspective on the Zarthon threat. His decision to join the team in person was a testament to the Kithar's commitment to their alliance with humanity. As the team assembled for the first time in a secure facility on Earth, the air was thick with anticipation and an undercurrent of tension. These individuals, each exceptional in their fields, had never operated as a unit. Their backgrounds and personalities promised a dynamic mix of collaboration and conflict. Commander Wren addressed his newly formed team, emphasizing the gravity of their mission and the eyes of the galaxy upon them. They were to undertake operations that would tip the balance in the shadow war against the Zarthons, striking at key targets, gathering intelligence, and sowing discord among the enemy ranks. The success of their mission hinged not only on their individual skills, but on their ability to work together as a cohesive unit. The days that followed were a flurry of activity. The team underwent intense training sessions, learning to operate Kithar technology and integrate it with their tactics. Simulations tested their ability to adapt to unforeseen scenarios, and strategic meetings ran late into the night, mapping out their first operation. Despite the initial clashes of personality and approach, a sense of camaraderie began to emerge among the team members. Their shared purpose, to prove humanity's worth and defend the galaxy against the Zarthon menace, served as a powerful unifying force. They were no longer just representatives of their individual pasts, but members of a team that held the future of the galaxy in their hands. As their departure for the first mission approached, Commander Wren looked over his team, a mix of humans and their Kithar ally, 
each ready to face the unknown. They had been brought together by circumstance, but now they stood together by choice, a testament to the strength of unity in the face of adversity. Their first mission was a daring one, to sabotage a crucial Zarthan supply route that supplied their frontline forces. Intelligence, provided by the Kythars, had revealed a weak point in the Zarthon logistics chain, a remote but heavily guarded station on the edge of a nebula where supplies were transferred from larger cargo carriers to smaller, stealthier vessels capable of bypassing the usual security measures of allied territories. The team, aboard a modified stealth ship courtesy of the Kythar's advanced technology, approached the target with the silence of a shadow passing over the stars. Commander Ren's plan was clear. Infiltrate the station, plant charges at critical junctures, and escape before the Zarthon forces could mount a response. The operation's success would not only cripple the Zarthon advance, but also send a message that humanity and their allies were far from defeated. Dr. Lena Kurov had adapted the stealth technology to mask their approach, a feat that even the Kithars had not thought possible with such speed. Mikhail Santos had plotted their infiltration route, a path that weaved through sensor dead zones and exploited the station's routine security sweeps. Tanya Weber and Kale, the Kithar technician, were tasked with the physical placement of the explosives, their skills complementing each other in the dangerous dance of evasion and assault. As they neared the station, the reality of their mission pressed in. Jace Lee, using his diplomatic insights, fed last-minute intelligence to the team, identifying key personnel to avoid and potential escape routes. Their approach was flawless, the station looming ahead like a behemoth unaware of the threat in its midst. The infiltration was a tense affair. Every shadow could conceal a patrol, every corridor a security measure not accounted for in their planning. Yet, under Ren's leadership, they moved with a purpose, guided by Santos's strategy and Kurov's technological prowess. Weber and Kale reached the first charge point, setting their devices with practiced ease. The nebula outside cast an ethereal glow through the station's transparent dome, a serene backdrop to the tension within. As they moved to the next point, the unexpected happened. A Zarthon patrol, off schedule and clearly on high alert, stumbled upon the scene. What followed was a blur of motion. Weber, her combat skills honed to a razor's edge, engaged the Zarthon soldiers. Kale, despite his technical background, showed a surprising adeptness in the skirmish, using a device to disorient their attackers long enough for Weber to neutralize the threat. The commotion had not gone unnoticed. Alarms wailed, and the station came alive with activity. The team's extraction became a desperate race against time. Charges set. They retraced their steps evading pursuit with a combination of guile and sheer audacity. Their escape was a narrow one, the stealth ship breaking away from the station just as the first of the charges detonated. The explosions, precise and devastating, tore through the supply hub, crippling the Zarthan logistics in that sector and casting a wave of confusion among their ranks. As they made their way back to friendly space, the team was silent, processing the adrenaline of the mission and the realization of their narrowly avoided capture. Their success had been undeniable, but the risks they had taken weighed heavily on them all. They had faced the enemy, seen their resolve, and understood the cost of their war. Commander Wren, watching the nebula fade into the distance, felt a mix of relief and resolve. This mission was but the first step in a long campaign, a campaign that would test them all to their limits but it had proven their capability not just to the Kithars or the unseen eyes of the Galactic Council, but to themselves. Humanity, alongside their allies, had struck a blow against the Zarthons, a blow that would not be the last. The road ahead was fraught with danger, but for now they allowed themselves a moment of triumph, a brief respite in the storm that lay ahead. After the razor-edge success of their first mission, the team found themselves navigating a precarious return journey, their spirits buoyed by victory, but shadowed by the near catastrophe of discovery. The operation had proven their effectiveness, yet the close call with the Zarthon patrol served as a stark reminder of the stakes involved. As they retreated into the relative safety of allied space, an unexpected development awaited. 
one that would challenge their understanding of the galaxy's political landscape and their place within it. While en route to their base, the stealth ship, still cloaked in the advanced technology that had shielded their approach, detected an anomaly. A distress signal, faint but unmistakable, pulsed through the void, its origins traced to a sector known for its neutrality in the galactic conflict. The decision to investigate fell to Commander Wren, who, mindful of the potential for a trap yet driven by an unwavering moral compass, chose to alter their course. The source of the distress signal was a Kithar vessel, crippled and adrift, its hull scarred by Zarthon weaponry. The team's intervention was swift, docking with the damaged ship and boarding with medical and technical support at the ready. What they found was a crew on the brink of catastrophe, their ship sabotaged from within by a Zarthon infiltrator, now neutralized, who had sought to sow discord among the Kithar ranks. The rescue operation was a delicate one. Kale, their Kithar teammate, navigated the complexities of his people's technology and culture, facilitating a dialogue that bridged the gap between the human rescuers and the Kithar survivors. As they worked to stabilize the vessel and tend to the wounded, an unexpected bond formed between the two crews, a shared sense of purpose and understanding that transcended the boundaries of race and allegiance. The Kythars, traditionally viewed with a mix of respect and distant admiration by humanity, were revealed in those tense hours to possess not just advanced technology, but a depth of emotion and a capacity for gratitude that many had not anticipated. The commander of the Kithar ship, a being of stoic demeanor and sharp intellect, extended their thanks to Commander Wren and his team in a gesture that went beyond formalities, offering not just words, but a tangible offer of alliance. This encounter, born from the chaos of conflict, became a turning point. The Kithars, impressed by the humans' bravery and the effectiveness of their mission against the Zarthons, proposed a formal alliance, one that would extend beyond the secret pact and into the realm of shared intelligence, resources, and mutual defense. The implications of this offer were profound. A formal alliance with the Kythars would not only bolster the team's capabilities, but could shift the balance of power in the conflict against the Zarthons. It was a testament to the impact of their actions, a sign that their efforts had begun to reshape the galaxy's political landscape in ways they had not anticipated. As they escorted the Kithar vessel to a secure location for repairs, the team grappled with the ramifications of their growing alliance. The lines of battle were being redrawn, and their role within this evolving conflict was becoming increasingly significant. They were no longer just a team operating in the shadows. They were catalysts for change, agents of a new era of cooperation in the face of a common enemy. Commander Wren, reflecting on the journey ahead, recognized the weight of the responsibility they now carried. Their mission had expanded, their objectives growing more complex as the scope of their influence widened. Yet amid these reflections, there was a sense of optimism, a belief that together, humans and Kithars could confront the Zarthon menace and emerge victorious. The rescue of the Kythar vessel had been unexpected, but it had reinforced a crucial truth. In the darkness of space, amid the vastness of the galaxy, alliances forged in the heat of battle were the strongest of all. The path ahead was fraught with danger, but it was one they would now walk together, united in purpose and strengthened by the bonds of camaraderie and shared destiny. As news of the daring rescue operation and the burgeoning alliance between humans and the Kythars spread through the ranks and among the allied civilizations, the tide of public opinion began to shift. The once skeptical voices that had echoed through the halls of power on Earth and across the Galactic Council's chambers were now hushed, replaced by murmurs of admiration and a growing sense of hope. The team's success against the Zarthons, coupled with their unexpected alliance, began to crystallize into a symbol of what could be achieved when unity prevailed over division. Commander Alex Wren and his team, once operating in the shadows, now found themselves at the heart of a galactic narrative. Their actions, though initially intended to be covert, had sparked a flame that illuminated the potential for a united front against the Zarthon menace. It was a development that the Galactic Council, with its myriad races and often conflicting agendas, could not ignore. 
the pressure on the Council to reconsider its stance on humanity's involvement in the war grew. Civilizations that had once advocated for humanity's exclusion now voiced their support for the inclusion of Earth's forces in the conflict. The evidence was undeniable. The team's operations had not only demonstrated human valor and ingenuity, but had also highlighted the strategic benefits of cooperation between different species. In the midst of this shifting landscape, the team prepared for their next operation, buoyed by the knowledge that their actions had begun to mend the fractures within the galactic community. They were no longer outliers, but pioneers of a new approach to the war against the Zarthons. The unity between humans and Kythars served as a model, encouraging other civilizations to reconsider their own positions and, in some cases, to offer their support and resources to the cause. However, the growing support for their cause did not mean the path ahead was clear of obstacles. The Zarthons, recognizing the threat posed by this newfound alliance, intensified their efforts. Attacks became more frequent and more ferocious targeting not just military installations but planets and systems that were symbolic of the emerging unity among the allied races. The team's next mission was emblematic of the escalating conflict. Intelligence, secured through the network of alliances that had begun to form around their efforts, pointed to a Zarthon superweapon in development, a device capable of destabilizing stars and rendering entire systems uninhabitable. The stakes were higher than ever, with the potential for unimaginable loss should the weapon be deployed. Commander Wren and his team, together with their Kethar allies, embarked on a mission to infiltrate the facility where the superweapon was being constructed. It was a fortress hidden within a nebula, heavily guarded and fortified against any form of assault. The mission required a blend of stealth, precision, and raw courage, qualities that the team had demonstrated time and again, but never under such perilous conditions. As they navigated the nebula, evading sensors and patrols with a combination of human ingenuity and Kethar technology, the unity and trust among the team members were palpable. They moved as one, each playing their part in the intricate dance of espionage and combat that would be required to sabotage the weapon. The operation's success would not only avert a catastrophe, but would also serve as a definitive statement to the galaxy that the coalition of races led by the human Kethar Alliance was a force capable of confronting and overcoming the Zarthon threat. It was a moment that would define the future of the galaxy, a test of the bonds that had been forged in the fires of conflict and adversity. As they prepared to strike, Commander Wren understood the gravity of the moment. This was more than just another mission. It was a chance to turn the tide of the war, to demonstrate that unity was not just an ideal, but a powerful weapon against tyranny and oppression. The eyes of the galaxy were upon them, watching, waiting, and hoping for a sign that the darkness could be pushed back, and that a new dawn was possible. The mission to infiltrate the Zarthon superweapon facility marked a turning point in the galactic conflict, a daring endeavor that would either cement the Allied forces' resistance or spell disaster in their fight for survival. Commander Alex Wren and his team, alongside their Kethar allies, faced the daunting task with a resolve forged from their shared experiences and the collective hope of countless civilizations resting on their shoulders. The nebula, hiding the facility in its swirling mists, was a labyrinth of sensor anomalies and electromagnetic storms. Navigating through it required not just technological prowess, but a deep understanding of the chaotic dance of natural forces. Dr. Lena Kurov and Kale, the Kythar technician, worked in tandem, guiding their stealth ship through the tempest with a precision that defied the odds. Upon reaching the perimeter of the facility, the true challenge began. The Zarthon defenses were formidable, a network of automated turrets, patrolling drones and shield generators that protected the superweapon from any conventional assault. It was a fortress in the truest sense, designed to be impervious to attack. Yet within its walls lay the power to unleash devastation on a scale hitherto unimaginable. The team's plan hinged on stealth and subterfuge. Mikhail Santos had devised a strategy that would see them breach the facility's defenses through a series of coordinated distractions and hacking attempts, exploiting the brief windows of vulnerability these diversions created. Tanya Weber and Jace Lee, each skilled in their respective fields of combat and diplomacy, 
were prepared to adapt to the unforeseen challenges that lay ahead, knowing that the success of their mission depended on their ability to think on their feet. As they made their way through the facility, the enormity of their task became ever more apparent. The Zarthun superweapon, a monolithic structure at the heart of the complex, was nearing completion. Its design was alien, a testament to the Zarthon's technological supremacy, but in its cold geometry there was no mistaking the intent of destruction it was built to fulfill. The team worked with a quiet urgency, placing explosive charges at critical junctures and hacking into the facility's control systems to sow confusion among its defenders. Every step brought them closer to their goal, but also deeper into enemy territory, where the margin for error dwindled to a razor's edge. The climax of their mission came with the detonation of the charges, a series of explosions that rocked the facility and triggered a chain reaction that would ensure the superweapon's destruction. However, the operation did not go unnoticed. Zarthon forces, alerted to the intrusion, converged on their location, leading to a fierce confrontation that tested the team's combat abilities to their limits. Weber and Kale, fighting back to back, held off waves of Zarthon soldiers while Santos and Lee worked to complete the sabotage of the weapon's core. Amid the chaos, Commander Ren faced a Zarthon commander, a being of immense power and malevolence, in a battle that would determine the fate of their mission. The battle was brutal, a testament to the desperation and resolve on both sides. But in the end, it was the courage and ingenuity of Ren and his team that prevailed. The superweapon was destroyed, its threat neutralized in a brilliant flare that illuminated the nebula and sent a shockwave through the Zarthon ranks. Their escape was a harrowing race against time, the facility collapsing around them as they made their way back to their ship. The journey home was a somber one, marked by the weight of their sacrifices and the cost of their victory. They had succeeded in their mission, but not without loss. The destruction of the Zarthan superweapon was a turning point in the war, a blow from which the Zarthan forces would struggle to recover. News of the operation spread like wildfire, bolstering the morale of the allied races and cementing the reputation of Commander Ren and his team as heroes of the galaxy. Yet, as they returned to their base, there was little time for celebration. The war was far from over, and their actions had undoubtedly drawn the attention of the Zarthon High Command. They had won a significant battle, but the war for the galaxy's future raged on, with new challenges and battles on the horizon. The Siege of Althoria, a strategic planet critical to the war effort, loomed as the next challenge for the Allied forces. It was a battle that would require not just the courage and skill of Ren and his team, but the unity and resolve of all who stood against the Zarthons. The fight for freedom, for the future of the galaxy, was just beginning. In the aftermath of the daring mission to neutralize the Zarthon's superweapon, the Allied forces, buoyed by their significant victory, turned their attention to the looming battle for Althoria. This planet, rich in resources and strategically located at the crossroads of key hyperlanes, had become the focal point of the war effort. Its capture or defense would significantly sway the tide of the conflict. Commander Alex Wren and his team, now regarded as elite operatives within the Allied ranks, were once again at the forefront of planning the defense of Althoria. The planet's surface, dotted with ancient ruins and sprawling megacities, was about to become the stage for one of the largest battles the galaxy had witnessed in centuries. Preparations were intense and exhaustive. The team worked alongside Althorian defense forces and their Kithar allies, integrating advanced technology with proven tactics to fortify the planet's defenses. Space around Althoria bristled with defensive platforms and minefields, while on the ground, troops prepared for the possibility of hand-to-hand -hand combat in the event of a Zarthon landing. As the Zarthon fleet emerged from hyperspace, a vast armada that blotted out the stars, the sense of anticipation was palpable. The battle began with a series of high-stakes skirmishes in orbit, where Ren's team, aboard their stealth ship, executed hit-and-run attacks on Zarthon capital ships, exploiting their newly gained knowledge of Zarthon tactics. On the ground, Tanya Weber led a contingent of special forces in guerrilla actions against Zarthon ground troops that had penetrated the planet's defenses. 
Each engagement, though small in scale, was crucial in disrupting the enemy's advance, buying time for the main defensive lines to hold. Meanwhile, Dr. Lena Kurov and Kale worked feverishly to maintain the integrity of the planet's shield network, countering the Zarthon's attempts to breach it with their advanced weaponry. Their efforts kept the planetary defenses stable, warding off orbital bombardment that would have otherwise devastated Althoria's cities. The battle raged for days, a relentless exchange of fire, strategy, and will. Amidst the chaos, Mikhail Santos orchestrated a series of tactical retreats and counterattacks that confused and frustrated the Zarthon commanders, preventing them from gaining any significant foothold. However, the tide of the battle took a personal turn for the team when Jace Lee, operating behind enemy lines to gather crucial intelligence, was captured by Zarthon forces. The decision to mount a rescue operation was immediate and unanimous, a testament to the bonds formed between the team members through their shared trials. The rescue was as daring as it was dangerous. Penetrating a Zarthon-held fortress under the cover of darkness, the team, led by Commander Ren, fought their way through to where Lee was being held. The escape, with Lee in tow, was a harrowing sprint against an overwhelming enemy force hot on their heels. The rescue operation, though successful, came at a cost. In the final moments of their escape, the team was ambushed, leading to a devastating explosion that severely injured several team members and jeopardized their return to the Allied lines. The injury to one of their own, a comrade who had stood with them through countless dangers, cast a shadow over their return to the main forces. As they regrouped and tended to their wounded, the team was forced to confront the realities of war. The sacrifices made and the lives altered in the pursuit of victory. The battle for Althoria continued to rage, a testament to the resilience of those who fought for their homes and the futures of their people. The siege of Althoria, while a pivotal moment in the war against the Zarthons, was also a poignant reminder of the personal costs of such a conflict. For Commander Ren and his team, it was a moment that would define their resolve and their commitment to the cause reinforcing their determination to see the war through to its end, regardless of the sacrifices required. In the shadow of the Siege of Althoria, with its mix of victory and personal loss, Commander Alex Wren and his team faced the stark reality of war's toll. The injury to one of their own, a stark reminder of the fragility of life amidst the cosmos's chaos, served as a catalyst for a renewed determination. As they recuperated, a message from their Kaithar allies shifted the focus of the war effort, presenting a new mission that promised to unveil the depths of the Zarthon menace. The intelligence pointed to a remote Zarthon outpost, one that, until now, had eluded detection by the Allied forces. Its significance lay not in its size or firepower, but in the secrets it held. It was believed to be a research facility dedicated to developing a new form of warfare, that could turn the tide of the conflict in the Zarthon's favor. The mission was clear. Infiltrate the outpost, gather as much intelligence as possible, and if the opportunity presented itself, neutralize the threat. Commander Wren, ever mindful of the risks, knew this mission could not be approached with brute force. It required stealth, precision, and a deep understanding of the enemy. The team, still nursing the scars of Althoria, rallied around the cause, their resolve hardened by the memory of their fallen and wounded comrades. As they approached the outpost, cloaked in the shadow of a moon's crater, the enormity of the task ahead became evident. The outpost, a spire of dark metal and pulsing energy, stood as a beacon of the Zarthan's technological prowess. Its defenses, both physical and electronic, were unlike anything the team had faced before. Dr. Lena Kurov, with the aid of Kale, devised a plan to bypass the electronic defenses, creating a window for the team to infiltrate the facility. The operation was a delicate dance of timing and skill, each member of the team playing their part to perfection. Within the outpost, they discovered not just a research facility but a prison, where beings from across the galaxy were held captive, subjected to experiments aimed at harnessing their unique biological and psychic traits for warfare. The revelation was a chilling testament to the Zarthon's ambitions, their disregard for life in the pursuit of power. Among the prisoners was a figure from Ren's past, a mentor thought lost in the early days of the war. 
The reunion was brief but impactful, providing the team with invaluable insights into the Zarthon strategies and technologies. Armed with this new knowledge, they pressed on, determined to uncover the full extent of the outpost's secrets. The heart of the facility housed a prototype weapon, a device capable of manipulating gravitational fields to catastrophic effect. Its potential for destruction was unmatched, threatening to shift the balance of power irrevocably in the Zarthan's favor. The decision to sabotage the weapon was made with the understanding that it might cost them their only chance at escape. The ensuing destruction of the outpost was a calculated chaos, a symphony of fire and collapsing structures that consumed the prototype weapon and the Zarthan's dark ambitions with it. The escape was a narrow one, the team barely slipping away as the outposts succumbed to the inferno they had ignited. As they returned to Allied space, the weight of their discovery hung heavy. The Zarthon threat was even greater than they had imagined, a shadow that stretched across the stars, threatening to engulf the galaxy in darkness. But within that darkness, they had found a light, a hope that, even in the face of overwhelming odds, courage and unity could prevail. The mission had been a success, but the war was far from over. The team, now more than ever, understood the stakes of their fight. They had seen the face of the enemy, witnessed their disregard for life, and understood what they were fighting to protect. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with danger and the potential for loss, but they faced it as they had always done, together with a determination that was unyielding and a resolve that was unbreakable. After the harrowing mission that unveiled the depth of the Zarthon threat and their disregard for galactic life, Commander Alex Wren and his team returned to the Allied forces, not as mere soldiers, but as harbingers of a pivotal moment in the war. The intelligence gathered from the Zarthon outpost revealed not just the technological horrors they were preparing, but also sowed the seeds of a daring plan that could potentially end the conflict once and for all. The heart of the enemy, it was discovered, lay not in their armaments or even their superweapons, but in their command structure. The Zarthon hierarchy was rigid, centralized around a high command whose decisions were absolute. Disrupting this command could throw the Zarthon forces into disarray, providing a critical advantage to the Allied forces. Commander Wren, understanding the gravity and the risk of such a mission, proposed a bold plan, infiltrate the Zarthon high command itself. It was an audacious strategy, one that would require every ounce of their collective skills, courage, and the element of surprise. The Galactic Council, recognizing the potential of Wren's plan, gave their reluctant blessing, underlining the mission's unofficial status and the deniability of their involvement. Preparations for the mission were intense. The team, alongside a select group of specialists from the Kythar and other allied races, trained in simulated environments that mimicked the Zarthon command center. Every scenario was explored, from stealth infiltration to direct engagement. Dr. Lena Kurov and Kale worked tirelessly to develop technology that could counteract the Zarthon's advanced security measures, while Tanya Weber and Mikhail Santos honed the team's combat and strategic tactics to a razor's edge. The plan was simple yet fraught with complexity. They would use a captured Zarthon vessel to approach the command center, relying on Kurov's hacking skills to mimic Zarthon clearance codes. Once inside, the team would split into two groups, one led by Commander Wren to plant a series of explosives that would cripple the command center's operations, and another led by Weber to secure a means of escape. As they approached the Zarthon High Command, hidden among the debris of a recent battle to mask their approach, the tension was palpable. The success of their mission hinged on precision and the unpredictable element of luck. They were venturing into the lion's den, fully aware that there was no room for error. The infiltration began without a hitch, the Zarthon vessel slipping through the enemy's defenses unnoticed. Inside the command center, they found a hive of activity, a stark contrast to the cold efficiency they had expected. The Zarthon command was on high alert the intelligence from the outpost having alerted them to potential threats. Wren's team moved with silent determination, each member acutely aware of their role in the mission's success. They encountered resistance, as expected, but their preparation paid off, allowing them to neutralize threats with minimal commotion. The explosives were placed, 
a silent countdown ticking away to what they hoped would be a crippling blow to the Zarthon's war efforts. Meanwhile, Weber's team secured a transport, engaging in a fierce battle that tested their resolve and combat prowess. The explosion rocked the Zarthon Command Center, a series of detonations that tore through the facility's critical systems, sowing chaos among the ranks of the enemy. In the confusion, Ren's team made their escape, rendezvousing with Weber's group at the pre-secured transport. As they fled the imploding command center, the significance of their actions began to dawn on them. They had struck at the heart of the enemy, delivering a message that the Allied forces were capable of more than just resistance. They were a formidable force, capable of taking the fight directly to the Zarthon. The mission's success was a turning point in the war, a blow to the Zarthon that would take them years to recover from, if at all. Commander Ren and his team returned to the Allied forces as heroes, their names whispered among the ranks with a reverence reserved for legends. Yet, even as they celebrated their victory, they knew the war was far from over. The Zarthon menace was wounded but not vanquished. The path ahead remained fraught with danger and uncertainty. But for now, they had achieved the impossible, a feat that would be remembered in the annals of galactic history. The fight for freedom and for the future of the galaxy would continue, but the courage and ingenuity of Commander Ren and his team had lit a beacon of hope in the darkness, a beacon that would shine for generations to come. The aftermath of the audacious strike on the Zarthon High Command reverberated through the corridors of power across the galaxy. The boldness of Commander Alex Wren and his team's action had not only inflicted a crippling blow on the Zarthon command structure, but also galvanized the Allied forces, sparking a newfound vigor in their fight against the encroaching menace. The morale, once wavering under the shadow of the Zarthon's relentless advance, was now bolstered by the tangible proof that victory was within reach. As the Allied forces rallied, Strategists and leaders from across the galaxy convened to capitalize on the momentum. The destruction of the Zarthon Command Center had opened a window of opportunity, a chance to launch a counteroffensive that could potentially turn the tide of the war. The target was the Siege of Althoria, a battle that had raged on the fringes of the Althoria system, its outcome teetering on the edge of a knife. The Siege of Althoria had become more than just a strategic objective. It was a symbol of resistance against the Zarthon threat, a beacon of hope for the Allied races. The planet's strategic position and resources were critical, but its symbolic value as the site of humanity's and their allies' defiance was immeasurable. Commander Wren and his team, at the heart of this renewed push, were tasked with leading a specialized strike force designed to break the siege. The operation was a multifaceted assault, combining spaceborne attacks to break the Zarthon blockade with ground operations aimed at recapturing key positions on the planet's surface. The Allied fleet, a mix of ships from across the galaxy, each bearing the marks of battles past, assembled at the edge of the Althoria system. Among them, the stealth ship that had carried Ren and his team on countless missions, now a symbol of the indomitable spirit of the Allied forces. As the fleet moved into position, a tense silence fell over the crew. The space around Althoria, once a vibrant route of commerce and travel, was now a battlefield, strewn with the wreckage of ships and the scars of energy weapon discharges. The Zarthon blockade, a formidable array of dreadnoughts and support vessels, loomed ahead, a seemingly insurmountable barrier. The battle commenced with a barrage of fire from the Allied fleet, a carefully coordinated strike aimed at creating chaos in the Zarthon ranks. Commander Ren's team, aboard their stealth ship, penetrated the blockade under the cover of this chaos, their sights set on the planet below. The ground operation was a gauntlet of fire and steel. The team, supported by units from the Allied forces, fought their way through Zarthon positions, each engagement pushing them closer to their objective. The combat was brutal, a testament to the Zarthon's determination to hold Althoria but the Allied forces fought with a fervor fueled by the knowledge that the tide of the war was turning. In the thick of battle, amidst the clash of weapons and the roar of engines, the team exemplified the unity and resilience that had become their hallmark. Dr. Kurov's innovations, Santos's tactics, Weber's prowess in combat, 
and the support of their allies converged in a symphony of warfare that gradually, inch by inch, reclaimed Althoria from the Zarthon grip. The pivotal moment came with the recapture of the Althorian Command Center, a strategic victory that effectively broke the Zarthon's hold on the planet. As the last of the Zarthon forces were driven from Althoria, a cheer rose from the ranks of the Allied forces, a sound that carried across the planet and through the fleet in orbit. The siege of Althoria was over, a decisive victory that marked the beginning of the end for the Zarthon threat. The Allied forces, once disparate and divided, were now a unified front, a coalition of races bound by a common cause and the shared sacrifices that had brought them to this point. For Commander Wren and his team, the victory was bittersweet. The cost of the war had been high, with losses that would be mourned for generations to come. Yet, in the face of such loss, they had achieved something remarkable. They had proven that unity could prevail over division, that courage and determination could overcome even the darkest of threats. The war had reached its turning point. The momentum irrevocably shifted in favor of the Allied forces. But the fight was not yet over. The Zarthun menace, though weakened, remained a shadow over the galaxy, a reminder of the vigilance required to safeguard the fragile peace that had been won. In the aftermath of the pivotal victory at Althoria, the galaxy found itself at a crossroads. The Zarthon threat, once an overwhelming shadow cast across star systems, was now receding, beaten back by the unified efforts of the Allied forces led by Commander Alex Wren and his team. However, the war had left deep scars, both on the physical landscapes of countless worlds and in the hearts of those who had fought. The period following the Siege of Althoria was marked by a complex tapestry of recovery, reflection, and rebuilding. Worlds that had been battlegrounds began the slow process of healing, their cities and ecosystems bearing the marks of conflict. The Allied forces, now a cohesive coalition, turned their focus towards aiding these ravaged planets, their efforts a testament to the solidarity forged in the heat of battle. Commander Wren, his team at his side, found themselves navigating a new kind of challenge. The heroes of the war were now architects of peace, tasked with guiding the reconstruction efforts and ensuring that the unity achieved during the conflict would endure in the face of peacetime's complexities. On Althoria, where the team's victory had signaled the turning of the tide, the reconstruction efforts served as a beacon of hope for the galaxy. The planet, with its strategic importance and symbolic status as the site of a major victory, became a hub for diplomatic meetings, peace conferences, and summits aimed at securing a lasting peace. Dr. Lena Kurov and Kale, leveraging their technological expertise, led projects to restore damaged ecosystems and rebuild infrastructure, their work showcasing the potential for innovation and cooperation between different species. Their efforts were not just about repairing what had been lost, but about building something new, a vision of a galaxy where collaboration and understanding bridged the divides of the past. As the galaxy embarked on this journey of recovery, the Allied forces remained vigilant. The Zarthon threat had been diminished but not eradicated. A reminder of the need for unity and preparedness. The peace that followed the war was a delicate balance. One that required the continued cooperation of all the races of the galaxy. Commander Wren and his team, recognized as heroes, found themselves in a world transformed by their actions. The battles they had fought had not just been for survival, but for the future a future they were now helping to shape. As they worked alongside allies old and new, their legacy was not just in the victories they had achieved, but in the path they laid for the generations to come. The war had shown the galaxy the best and worst of what it could be. In its aftermath, the choice of what to become lay in the hands of those who had fought and those who would remember. The road to healing was long, and the scars of the conflict would not soon fade, but in the efforts to rebuild, there was a glimmer of hope, a chance to forge a galaxy defined not by its conflicts but by its capacity for unity and renewal. The story of Commander Wren and his team had become a legend, a narrative of courage, sacrifice, and the power of unity in the face of darkness. As they looked to the future, they knew that the peace they had fought for was fragile, but in its fragility lay the potential for true strength 
a strength born of diversity, cooperation, and the shared dream of a better tomorrow. The galaxy, once riven by conflict and the shadow of the Zarthon menace, now breathed the tentative breaths of peace. Worlds began to knit themselves back together, their people embarking on the painstaking journey of reconstruction. Commander Alex Wren and his team, instrumental in the turning tide of the war, found themselves in a galaxy far different from the one they had fought to save. It was a galaxy not just of repaired structures and revitalized ecosystems, but of healed spirits and newfound bonds. In this time of rebuilding, Commander Wren reflected on the journey that had brought them to this point. The victories, the losses, and the countless sacrifices made along the way were not just memories. They were the foundations upon which the future would be built. The team had disbanded each member taking on new roles that leveraged their unique skills and experiences in the service of peace. Dr. Lena Kurov returned to her research, now focused on developing technologies that would ensure such a conflict could never again threaten the galaxy. Her work, inspired by the alliances formed during the war, sought to bridge the gaps between species, creating a shared repository of knowledge and innovation. Mikhail Santos took up a position within the newly formed Galactic Security Council, a body tasked with maintaining peace and preventing future conflicts. His strategic mind, once focused on outmaneuvering the enemy, now worked towards ensuring that diplomacy prevailed over aggression. Tanya Weber found her calling in training the next generation of defenders, her academy becoming a beacon for those who wished to serve the galaxy, not just with strength, but with honor and integrity. Her students came from all corners of the galaxy, a testament to the unity that had been forged in the crucible of war. Kyle, the Kythar technician, became an ambassador for his people, working tirelessly to strengthen the bonds between the Kithars and other civilizations. His efforts were instrumental in establishing a new era of cooperation and mutual respect among the galaxy's diverse inhabitants. Commander Wren himself chose a quieter path. Though he could have claimed any number of prestigious positions, he instead dedicated himself to documenting the war and its aftermath, ensuring that the lessons learned would not be forgotten by future generations. His writings became essential reading for those who sought to understand the cost of war and the value of peace. As the galaxy moved forward, the legacy of the war and the heroes who had fought it remained ever-present. Monuments and memorials sprung up on worlds across the galaxy not as reminders of conflict, but as beacons of hope, resilience, and unity. Yet, amid the peace, there was the unspoken knowledge that vigilance must be maintained. The Zarthon threat had been vanquished, but the universe was vast, its mysteries many. The Allied forces remained, a symbol of the galaxy's commitment to safeguarding the peace that had been so hard won. In this new era, the lines between former enemies and allies blurred, creating a tapestry rich with the potential for growth and discovery. The galaxy, once defined by its divisions, now stood as a testament to what could be achieved when beings from all walks of life came together for a common cause. Commander Wren, looking out into the starlit expanse from his quiet home on a once besieged world, felt a profound sense of accomplishment and hope. The war was over, but the journey of building a lasting peace was just beginning. It was a challenge he and those who stood with him during the darkest times were ready to embrace. For in their unity, they had found not just the strength to overcome, but the vision to lead the galaxy into a brighter future. As the galaxy settled into an uneasy peace, the focus shifted from rebuilding to solidifying the fragile alliances that had been forged in the heat of battle. Commander Alex Wren, now a respected figure across worlds for his contributions to the war effort, found himself at the center of this new dynamic. The victory had not only dismantled the Zarthon threat, but also opened a Pandora's box of political maneuvering and power plays among the allied races. The establishment of the Galactic Security Council, with Mikhail Santos at its heart, was a testament to the allied forces' commitment to a united front. However, the council quickly became a battleground of ideologies and priorities. Each member race brought its own perspective on security, diplomacy, and the distribution of resources. Santos, ever the strategist, navigated these turbulent waters with a keen understanding of the bigger picture. 
advocating for policies that emphasized cooperation over domination. Meanwhile, the peace conferences that had once symbolized hope and unity began to reveal the cracks in the alliance. Disagreements over territorial rights, reparations, and the disarmament of wartime fleets threatened to unravel the fabric of the coalition. It was during these tense times that Commander Wren's role transitioned from warrior to diplomat. Drawing on his experiences and the respect he commanded across the galaxy, Wren became a voice of reason, bridging gaps between conflicting parties with a mix of pragmatism and idealism. The reconstruction efforts on war-torn planets also unveiled the depth of the challenges ahead. Dr. Lena Kurov's technologies, groundbreaking as they were, faced implementation hurdles. Different worlds, each with its unique ecosystem and societal needs, required bespoke solutions, not one-size-fits-all fixes. Kurov, undeterred, spearheaded initiatives that empowered local populations to adapt and integrate these technologies according to their needs, fostering a sense of ownership and participation in the reconstruction process. Tanya Weber's Academy, a melting pot of young talents from across the galaxy, became a symbol of the new era's possibilities. Yet, it also highlighted the lingering prejudices and mistrust between species. Weber, with her unwavering commitment to unity, faced the challenge head-on, creating programs that not only trained the defenders of tomorrow, but also ambassadors of peace. Kale, navigating his dual role as a technician and ambassador, found himself mediating between technological advancement and cultural preservation. The sharing of Kythar technology, while a boon to the reconstruction efforts, raised concerns about cultural homogenization and the loss of traditional ways of life. Kale's diplomatic efforts focused on creating frameworks for technological exchange that respected and preserved each race's cultural heritage. In this time of transition, the heroes of the war worked tirelessly to ensure that the peace they had fought for was not squandered. They faced a myriad of challenges, from political discord to societal upheaval, each requiring the same dedication and courage that had brought them through the conflict. As the galaxy moved forward, it became clear that the war had been but the first step in a long journey toward true unity. The legacy of Commander Wren and his team, once defined by their victories on the battlefield, now evolved to encompass their contributions to the peace that followed. They had become guardians of a fragile peace, architects of a new galaxy that, while imperfect, held the promise of a united future. Amid the complex web of peacebuilding and political maneuvering, a new challenge emerged, one that would test the resilience of the fledgling galactic coalition. A series of mysterious incidents at the border regions of Allied space began to raise alarms. Ships disappearing without a trace, Communication relays found sabotaged, and remote outposts left in ruins. The patterns were erratic, but increasingly bold. These incidents, initially dismissed as the actions of rogue factions or pirates taking advantage of the post-war chaos, soon revealed a more sinister origin. Commander Alex Wren, drawn by both duty and a deep-seated sense of foreboding, spearheaded an investigation into these disturbances. With a select team comprising Dr. Lena Kurov, Mikhail Santos, Tanya Weber, and Kale, along with new allies from various corners of the galaxy, Wren set out to unravel the mystery. Their journey took them to the fringes of known space, where the fabric of peace was thinnest and the shadows deepest. Their first clue came from a derelict vessel adrift in the void, its crew gone, save for cryptic messages etched into the walls of the ship's bridge. The messages spoke of a shadow, a darkness that was spreading, unseen but palpable. Kurov's analysis of the ship's log revealed a pattern of encounters with unidentified ships, all leading back to a sector of space long thought uninhabited. As they ventured deeper into this sector, the team encountered the source of the disturbances, a civilization thought extinct, emerging from the shadows with technology that could bend light and perception, making them virtually invisible. This civilization, the Phantoms, had once been peaceful explorers, but the war had driven them to the brink their territories caught in the crossfire between the Zarthon forces and the Allied Coalition. The Phantoms viewed the emerging Galactic Coalition with suspicion, seeing it as a continuation of the forces that had devastated their space. Their attacks were a preemptive strike, an attempt to safeguard their existence from perceived threats. 
The revelation of their plight presented Ren and his team with a dilemma. Here was a civilization, driven to desperation, challenging the very foundation of the peace they had worked so hard to build. The negotiations were tense and fraught with misunderstanding. The Phantoms, with their advanced stealth technology, held a significant advantage, able to strike without warning. Yet, they underestimated the determination of Ren's team and the Allied forces to preserve the fragile peace. It was a standoff that could easily escalate into a conflict that the galaxy could ill afford. Through a combination of diplomacy and strategic ingenuity, Ren and his team managed to broker a precarious ceasefire. Santos's insights into the Phantom's strategy, Weber's defensive tactics, Kurov's technological countermeasures, and Kale's diplomatic overtures opened a channel of communication. The ceasefire was the first step toward integrating the Phantoms into the galactic community, acknowledging their fears and offering protection under the Coalition's banner. This delicate dance of diplomacy and deterrence marked a turning point in the post-war era. The integration of the Phantoms into the Coalition was a testament to the possibility of unity amidst diversity, of understanding transcending suspicion. It was a slow and often challenging process, fraught with setbacks but driven by the shared goal of a galaxy where no civilization stood alone. Commander Ren and his team in navigating this intricate situation reinforced the notion that peace was not merely the absence of war, but the presence of justice and mutual respect. The incident with the Phantoms highlighted the need for vigilance and empathy in equal measure, reminding the galactic community that the path to lasting peace was a journey without end, paved with the lessons of the past and the hopes for the future. As the galaxy moved forward, the Coalition grew stronger, not just in might, but in understanding. The challenges it faced, from within and without, served to strengthen the bonds between its members forging a unity that was both a shield and a beacon. A shield against the darkness of the void, and a beacon of hope for all civilizations dreaming of a peaceful cosmos. With the Phantom Crisis averted and their integration into the Galactic Coalition underway, the galaxy found itself navigating a period of unprecedented peace and cooperation. Yet the echoes of war and conflict never fully dissipated, serving as a constant reminder of the fragility of this newfound harmony. Commander Alex Wren and his team, having become symbols of this delicate peace, found themselves facing challenges that were far different from the clear-cut confrontations of the war. The success with the Phantoms had opened a Pandora's box of diplomatic challenges. Other isolated or hidden civilizations, emboldened by the Phantoms' integration, began to emerge, each with their own grievances and fears about the Galactic Coalition. While none posed a direct threat on the scale of the Phantoms, their emergence tested the Coalition's capacity for diplomacy and inclusion. The galaxy was expanding, not in territory but in complexity. Amidst this backdrop of cautious expansion and diplomatic maneuvering, a discovery on the edge of the galaxy threatened to unravel the delicate tapestry of peace. An ancient artifact, predating even the oldest civilizations in the Coalition was uncovered on a remote, uninhabited planet. Its technology was beyond anything Dr. Lena Kurov or her peers had encountered, capable of manipulating the very fabric of reality. The artifact's discovery sparked a race among the Coalition members, each seeking to claim its secrets for themselves. Commander Wren, wary of the divisions such a race could cause, proposed a radical solution. The artifact would belong to no single civilization. Instead, it would be studied collaboratively, its secrets shared among all Coalition members. This proposal was met with resistance from factions within the Coalition, who saw the artifact as a means to secure their own supremacy. The debate over the artifact's fate served as a crucible, testing the strength of the alliances formed during the war. Tensions flared, old wounds were reopened, and the Coalition stood on the brink of fracturing. It was a scenario that required not just diplomatic skill, but a profound understanding of the shared values and aspirations that had united the galaxy against the Zarthon threat. Ren and his team embarked on a series of diplomatic missions, each aimed at reaffirming the Coalition's founding principles. Mikhail Santos employed his strategic acumen to navigate the political landscape, forging compromises and alliances. 
Tanya Weber and Kale, leveraging their reputations and the respect they commanded among the coalition races, worked to quell the rising tensions, reminding all parties of the coalition's purpose. The culmination of their efforts was a summit held on a neutral world, where representatives from every coalition member gathered to decide the artifact's fate. The summit was a tense affair, with debates and negotiations stretching into the night. Yet, amid the contention, a consensus began to emerge, shaped by the recognition of a shared destiny. The agreement reached was a testament to the Coalition's maturity and the diplomatic prowess of Ren and his team. The artifact would be placed under the guardianship of a newly established Galactic Institute of Science and Culture, where it would be studied by a diverse team of scientists and scholars from across the Coalition. The knowledge gained from the artifact would be shared freely, its benefits distributed to all civilizations in the Coalition. This resolution marked a significant milestone in the galaxy's history. The artifact, once a source of division, became a symbol of unity and shared purpose. It underscored the Coalition's commitment to a future where knowledge and power were not hoarded but shared, where the strength of the galaxy lay in its diversity and cooperation. As peace and stability returned, Commander Ren and his team looked to the horizon, aware that the galaxy's journey was far from over. Challenges would arise, and the bonds of the Coalition would be tested. Yet, in the successes and struggles that lay ahead, they saw the potential for a galaxy not defined by its conflicts, but by its capacity to overcome them, together. The legacy of their actions, once etched in the annals of war, would now be written in the efforts to build a lasting peace. As the galaxy entered a period of unprecedented scientific collaboration and cultural exchange, spurred on by the collective study of the ancient artifact, the fabric of galactic society began to weave together more tightly than ever before. This era of peace and cooperation, however, did not come without its own set of challenges. The vast differences in ideology, biology, and ethics across the myriad races of the coalition began to surface, prompting debates and discussions that tested the Coalition's unity in unexpected ways. Commander Alex Wren, who had been at the forefront of negotiating these delicate matters, found himself reflecting on the complexity of peace. It was one thing to unite against a common enemy, quite another to navigate the peaceful coexistence of diverse civilizations, each with its own deep-seated beliefs and customs. The galaxy was learning that peace was not a static state, but a dynamic, evolving process that required constant nurturing and adaptation. In this environment of complex interstellar diplomacy, a new mission emerged for Ren and his team, one that would take them to the frontiers of the Coalition's space, where a series of unexplained phenomena had been reported. These incidents, ranging from spatial anomalies to sudden outbreaks of ancient diseases, threatened not just the physical well-being of Coalition members, but the delicate political balance that had been achieved. The team's journey to these frontiers was a return to their roots, a reminder of the days when they traversed the unknown, facing dangers with a mix of courage and ingenuity. With Dr. Lina Kurov's scientific expertise, Mikhail Santos's strategic insights, Tanya Weber's unmatched skill in combat, and the diplomatic finesse of Kale, they set out to confront these mysteries, aware that the solutions might bring them into uncharted ethical territory. Their investigations revealed a startling connection between the anomalies and the ancient artifact. The artifact, while a source of technological advancement and unity, was also exerting an influence on the fabric of space-time itself, its ancient mechanisms interacting with the galaxy in ways not fully understood. The revelation posed a profound ethical dilemma. Could the Coalition continue to harness the artifact's knowledge, knowing its potential to cause harm? The debate that ensued reached every corner of the Coalition, sparking a galactic dialogue about responsibility, stewardship, and the pursuit of knowledge. Commander Wren, ever the mediator, advocated for a path that balanced scientific exploration with caution and respect for the unknown. It was a stance that resonated with many, leading to the establishment of a multi-species research initiative dedicated to studying the artifact's effects responsibly ensuring that the benefits of its knowledge did not come at the expense of the galaxy's safety. This initiative became a model for future exploration and discovery, embodying the principles of shared knowledge and mutual respect that had become the hallmarks of the Coalition.
The challenges posed by the artifact's influence were met not with fear or division, but with collaboration and a shared sense of purpose. As the Coalition navigated these complex waters, the bonds between its members grew stronger, forged in the fires of shared challenges and triumphs. The galaxy, once a tapestry of disparate threads, was becoming a rich, interwoven fabric, each thread contributing to the strength and beauty of the whole. Commander Wren and his team, once warriors, had become guardians of a peace that was as fragile as it was precious. Their legacy, once defined by battles fought, would now be remembered for the paths they forged towards understanding, cooperation, and a shared future. In the burgeoning era of unity and exploration, the galaxy found itself at a precipice, gazing into the potential of a future unmarred by the specters of war and division. Yet, as is often the case with moments of great advancement, New challenges emerged, testing the resolve and unity of the Galactic Coalition. A discovery on the fringes of explored space presented such a challenge, one that would require all of Commander Alex Wren and his team's experience, wisdom, and courage to confront. An exploratory vessel, operating at the very edge of Coalition space, stumbled upon a relic of a time long past, an ancient gateway, its design predating even the oldest civilizations of the Coalition. Initial studies suggested that it was part of a network, a system of gateways that could potentially link distant parts of the galaxy in ways that current hyperdrive technology could not match. The implications were staggering, offering pathways to distant stars and unknown worlds, but also opening doors to risks and dangers unimagined. The debate over the gateway's activation tore through the coalition, reigniting old fears and suspicions. Some saw it as an opportunity to leap forward to expand the boundaries of knowledge and exploration. Others feared it would be a beacon for whatever had caused other civilizations to retreat or vanish, the ones who had originally built the gateways. Commander Wren, ever the pioneer, advocated for a cautious approach. He proposed a series of exploratory missions, tightly controlled and monitored, to study the gateways and the realms they connected to. His voice, tempered by the battles he'd fought and the peace he'd helped build, carried weight. The Coalition, trusting in Wren's leadership and the proven wisdom of his team, agreed to a phased exploration initiative. The first mission through the Gateway was a historic moment, one that Wren and his team approached with a mix of excitement and trepidation. On the other side, they found not danger, but wonder, a system untouched by the ravages of time or conflict rich with resources and possibilities. Yet, it was what they didn't find that proved most intriguing, a complete absence of the civilization that had built the gateway, as if they had simply vanished. This mystery propelled a series of missions, each revealing new worlds, each empty of their creators. The team, alongside a growing contingent of scientists and explorers from across the coalition, began piecing together the story of a civilization that had reached across the stars, only to disappear. As they delved deeper into this mystery, they uncovered evidence of a cataclysm, a galactic event that had reshaped the very fabric of space-time. The ancient civilization hadn't vanished. They had been victims of their own ambition, their network of gateways destabilizing the galaxy in ways they couldn't predict or control. The revelation was a sobering reminder of the dangers of unchecked exploration and technological advancement. The Coalition faced a decision. Continue to use the gateways, armed with this new knowledge, or seal them, choosing the safety of the known galaxy over the allure of the unknown. Commander Wren, reflecting on the lessons of the past and the potential of the future, argued for balance. The gateways would remain, but under strict control their use limited to exploration and study until the Coalition could be certain they posed no threat. It was a decision that epitomized the Coalition's approach under Wren's guidance, bold in its aspirations but cautious in its execution, always mindful of the responsibility that came with power. As the galaxy looked forward, it did so with the knowledge that, while the stars held endless possibilities, they also held lessons to be learned and dangers to be respected. The future was bright, but its light was to be approached with wisdom, care, and a deep understanding of the past. The balance between exploration and caution defined the new era of the Galactic Coalition, 
a testament to the leadership and vision of Commander Alex Wren and his team. Their approach to the ancient gateways had opened up new realms of possibility, yet always with an eye towards the lessons of history and the value of prudence. However, as the Coalition grew more confident in its navigation of these once mysterious pathways, a discovery on a previously uncharted world challenged their principles to the core. This world, hidden away in a sector of space made accessible only through the ancient gateways, held evidence of a civilization not just advanced, but unparalleled in its technological achievements. Among the ruins, the team uncovered what appeared to be a device capable of manipulating the fundamental forces of the universe itself. Initial studies hinted at the potential for energy generation on a scale previously unimaginable, but also the capability for destruction that dwarfed even the most fearsome weapons in the Coalition's arsenal. The discovery sparked a fierce debate within the Coalition. Some saw the device as a key to securing the galaxy's future, providing a solution to energy needs that could elevate all civilizations within the Coalition to new heights of prosperity. Others, haunted by the lessons of the past and the near disasters encountered with the gateways, warned of the dangers inherent in wielding such power. Commander Wren found himself at the center of this storm his reputation as a hero of the war, and a voice of reason both a blessing and a burden. The decision on how to proceed with the device would have far-reaching implications, not just for the Coalition, but for the very fabric of the galaxy itself. Drawing upon the collective wisdom of his team and the allies they had made across the stars, Wren proposed a radical solution. The device would not be used, nor would it be destroyed. Instead, it would be sealed away placed under guard by a neutral party, its secrets locked until such a time when the Coalition could be assured of its safe application. Furthermore, this decision would be enshrined in a new galactic accord, a commitment by all Coalition members to pursue technological advancement responsibly, with oversight and ethical considerations at the forefront. The drafting of this accord was a monumental task, requiring negotiation, compromise, and the bridging of deep-seated differences. Yet, under Wren's leadership, it was accomplished. The Accord represented a maturation of the Coalition, a move from a unity forged in the face of external threats to one based on shared principles and mutual respect. The ceremony to seal the device and ratify the Accord was held on the planet of its discovery, now a symbol of the Coalition's commitment to its future. Leaders from across the galaxy gathered, each pledging their civilization's adherence to the principles laid out in the Accord. Commander Wren, in his address, spoke not of the end of exploration or the stifling of progress, but of the dawn of a new era of responsibility. We stand at the threshold of infinity, he said, guided by the light of our shared experiences, and the knowledge that our greatest achievements lie not in the conquest of the stars, but in the understanding of our place within them. The ratification of the Accord was a defining moment for the galaxy a pledge by its myriad peoples to walk together into the future, mindful of the lessons of the past and hopeful for the possibilities of the future. For Wren and his team, it was both a culmination of their journey and the beginning of a new chapter, one in which their legacy would be defined not by battles fought, but by the peace they had helped forge, a peace built on the foundation of wisdom, courage, and the unyielding belief in the potential for good within all beings. As the galaxy moved forward, it did so with a cautious optimism, aware of the dangers that lay in the unknown, but bolstered by the knowledge that together they could face any challenge. The future was vast, filled with mysteries to solve and worlds to discover, but the Coalition, guided by the principles of the Accord, was ready to meet it with open eyes and united purpose. With the Galactic Accord now a beacon of collective commitment and the ancient device securely sealed away, the galaxy found itself navigating a period of cautious optimism. This era, marked by a commitment to shared principles and the careful stewardship of technological advancement, did not diminish the spirit of exploration, but tempered it with a consciousness of the collective responsibility held by all civilizations within the Coalition. However, Peace and progress are often punctuated by challenges, and it was during this time of careful expansion and exploration 
that the coalition faced a new test. An emergent threat, unlike any before, began to manifest at the fringes of coalition space. Disturbances in the fabric of space-time, first dismissed as natural phenomena, were soon traced to an intelligent force. This force, which called itself the Voidborn, was of unknown origin, existing in the spaces between spaces, and it sought not conquest but the unraveling of reality itself. The Coalition, bound by the Accord and the leadership of figures like Commander Alex Wren, found themselves confronting an existential threat that challenged the very principles they had pledged to uphold. The Voidborn's ability to manipulate space-time presented a danger that could not be met with conventional means, requiring not just a military response, but a coordinated scientific and metaphysical approach. Commander Wren, ever at the forefront of the Coalition's defense, convened a council of the galaxy's brightest minds, including Dr. Lena Kurov, and representatives from civilizations with deep mystical traditions, in an effort to understand and counter the Voidborn threat. The discussions that ensued bridged science and spirituality, exploring the nature of reality and the potential for collective consciousness to influence the fabric of the universe. The plan that emerged was as daring as it was unprecedented. It proposed the creation of a network of beacons, devices that would harness the collective will and consciousness of the galaxy's myriad beings. These beacons, powered by the unified hope and determination of all the Coalition's races, would create a counterforce to the Voidborn's attempts to unravel reality. Constructing and activating the beacons required a galaxy-wide effort, a testament to the unity fostered by the Galactic Accord. Worlds that had once been at odds now worked side by side, sharing knowledge, resources, and a common purpose. The activation of the Beacon Network was a moment of unmatched solidarity, a collective act of will that resonated throughout the cosmos. The confrontation with the Voidborn was unlike any battle the galaxy had witnessed. It was fought not in the physical spaces of stars and planets, but in the conceptual realm, a clash of wills and ideologies. The Coalition, united in purpose and bolstered by the Beacon Network, faced the Voidborn in a struggle that transcended conventional notions of conflict. In the end, the unity and resolve of the Coalition proved stronger than the nihilistic intentions of the Voidborn. The disturbances began to subside, and the threat receded, leaving behind a galaxy changed by the experience. The victory over the Voidborn was not just a triumph over an external threat, but a confirmation of the Coalition's strength, a strength derived from its diversity and unity. In the aftermath, the galaxy reflected on the lessons learned. The Beacon Network, initially conceived as a weapon, became a symbol of the Coalition's potential to achieve great things through unity and shared purpose. Commander Wren and his team, who had led the effort, were celebrated not just as defenders of the galaxy, but as visionaries who had guided their civilizations to a deeper understanding of their place in the cosmos. As the Coalition looked to the future, it did so with a renewed sense of purpose. The challenges they had faced, from the war with the Zarthons to the confrontation with the Voidborn, had forged a galactic community that was more than the sum of its parts. The future was full of unknowns, but the galaxy faced it as a united entity, ready to explore the mysteries of the cosmos with wisdom, courage, and a shared commitment to the principles that had brought them through the darkest of times. Commander Wren, reflecting on the journey, saw the evolution of the galaxy not as a series of battles fought, but as a narrative of unity forged in the face of adversity. The legacy of their actions would be carried forward not in tales of conflict, but in the ongoing story of collaboration and mutual understanding. The galaxy moved forward, its many worlds and peoples bound by a common destiny, a testament to the enduring power of unity in the vast and wondrous expanse of the cosmos. As the galaxy moved beyond the era marked by the confrontation with the Voidborn, it found itself in a period of introspection and growth. The Beacon Network, originally conceived as a means to unite the collective will against a cosmic threat, had evolved into a symbol of the Coalition's capacity for shared consciousness and mutual support. This network became the backbone of a new initiative aimed at deepening the bonds between the Coalition's member civilizations, fostering not just technological and military alliances, but cultural and philosophical exchanges as well. 
In this atmosphere of burgeoning cooperation, Commander Alex Wren contemplated the next steps in his journey. Having been at the center of the galaxy's most pivotal moments, Wren recognized the need for a guiding framework that would ensure the lessons of the past were not forgotten in the rush towards the future. Drawing upon his experiences, and in consultation with allies and adversaries alike, Wren proposed the establishment of the Galactic Heritage Initiative, GHI. The GHI was envisioned as a multifaceted program dedicated to preserving the historical, cultural, and scientific heritage of the galaxy's myriad civilizations. Its goals were ambitious, to catalog the collective knowledge of the coalition, safeguard the artifacts and traditions of its member races, and foster an understanding of the diverse paths that had led to the formation of the Galactic Coalition. The initiative quickly gained support across the galaxy. Civilizations brought forth their histories, sharing tales of triumph and tragedy, of isolation and discovery. The GHI's archives grew, becoming a repository not just of information, but of the collective wisdom of the galaxy. Among the most significant projects undertaken by the GHI was the creation of the Intercultural Exchange Program, IEP, a series of missions designed to foster empathy and understanding among the Coalition's youth. Teams composed of individuals from different civilizations embarked on journeys to each other's worlds, engaging in cultural, scientific, and philosophical exchanges. These missions, often led by veterans of the Coalition's conflicts, including members of Wren's team, served as living lessons in the value of diversity and the strength derived from unity. The impact of the GHI and the IEP was profound. Misunderstandings and prejudices that had lingered from the days before the Coalition began to fade, replaced by a growing sense of kinship among the galaxy's inhabitants. The Beacon Network, once a symbol of defense, was repurposed to broadcast the findings and experiences of the GHI connecting the galaxy in a web of shared knowledge and mutual respect. As the galaxy navigated this era of enlightenment, the threats that had once seemed insurmountable were remembered not as specters to fear, but as milestones on the path to unity. The challenges of the future were many, but the Coalition faced them with a newfound confidence, secure in the knowledge that together they could overcome any obstacle. Commander Wren, reflecting on the journey, saw in the GHI a legacy that transcended his own contributions. It was a testament to the Coalition's capacity for growth and change, a promise to future generations that the lessons of the past would guide the way forward. The galaxy, once a tapestry of disparate threads, now pulsed with the vibrant energy of a unified entity, its myriad colors blending to create a picture of harmony and potential. The stars, once distant and cold, shone brightly on a coalition bound by a shared heritage and a common destiny, a community of worlds ready to face the unknown together, with open hearts and united wills. Commander Wren, standing on the cusp of this new era, knew that his journey, like that of the galaxy, was ever-evolving. The challenges ahead were as boundless as the cosmos, but so too were the possibilities. The legacy of unity he had helped forge was now a guiding light, illuminating the path to a future where the galaxy, in all its diversity, could thrive in peace and mutual prosperity.